Hello and welcome to Let's Make a Game in C++ and this is going to be episode 8 and in this episode we are finally going to do collision checking for the bricks and the ball which should basically bring us to some kind of a game really simple but it will be playable and you'll be able to do something so open up your editors, IDs or whatever you are using to edit the code and let's get right back to where we left off this is the code from last time, and if we compile that and run it, we see that we have a ball bouncing around the screen and two different colored bricks. I don't like that light blue, so I'm going to change that now. Where's the light color? Ah, here it is. I want it to be a little more... I don't know what. Let's try that out. Okay, that is purple let's leave it as it is so we have the ball and the purple blue bricks and today we're going to do collision checking and for that we're just going to use the function we wrote last time um, in the previous episodes this is the collision checking function and we're going to use it in the logic part of the main game loop to check if there was a collision between a brick and the ball. So we have the logic for the pad, the logic for the ball, and we should check for collision right after we move the ball. So this is the moving of the ball and we can check for collision here. Let's first do the simple collision checking. So we check for every brick if it has been collided with the ball. So we use a for loop to go through each of the bricks in the array so for int n is equal to 0 n is less than bricks this is our constant we use to save how many bricks we have and n plus plus a normal for loop to go through the array so now we have to check for collision so if check collision and now we have to put in the x, y width and height of the ball. So it's ball x, ball y, ball width height for the width and ball width height for the height. And now we have to put in the bricks, the current bricks, x, y width and height. So we go bricks, current one, so index n, dot x for the x position, bricks n index dot y, bricks dot we have let me just check that yeah, width and height yes oops bricks dot width and bricks current ones height it's true that all the bricks have the same width and height but let's make some clean code so write it down like this. So if that equals true, that means that there is a collision. Whoa, that. So if that equals true, there is a collision. And if there is a collision, we're going to negate the ball's y velocity. So ball, no, it's velocity y is equal to minus velocity y. So what this happens is it goes through the array of the bricks checks for collision and if there is a collision it's going to negate the velocity the y velocity of the ball so let's compile and run and see how that looks as you can see the ball just goes oh my mistake the ball simply is hitting the, the bricks and jumping all around and first of all let's change the initial position of the ball let's put it right somewhere in the white space so it doesn't start somewhere in the bricks and we have this up here this is the ball variables so let's change x no we can leave x but let's change the y position to let's say 400 and let's make it go up so velocity y for start is minus 0 0.2 and I think let's change that to 350 
So as you can see, the ball starts at the bottom, somewhere here, and goes up. That's maybe a little too low, but let's don't worry about that. And as you can see, it just wiggles around in there. Uh, but it does not destroy the brick. We have to program that. And we're going to use a boolean value to store if the brick has been destroyed or not. So it's going to be true if the brick is alive or false if the brick has been broken. So up here in the structure of the brick, let's add another variable, pool alive. In this we're going to store the brick's current state. And we also have to set that at the start, so this is the initial loop for setting up every brick. We have to set that alive is true, because if it's not, then they wouldn't be there. So we have to set them alive to true. So this is in the initial part, in the, where we define the ball, the bricks x, y, width and height. And now we also set it to alive is true. Now, we have to change two more pieces of code, and that is in the rendering, because we do not want to render the brick if it's not alive. So, we simply have to put an if statement here. If current bricks, so this is the loop that goes through all the bricks, and if we come to a brick which alive is equal to false, then we simply, I don't know, let's change that to true. So if a brick is alive, then we do this code. If it's not alive, then it's going to skip the code. So if the brick is alive, we set the color and then render it. If it's not alive, then it's going to go to the next brick. Now this is the rendering part. Now we have to change some things in the logic part because when we hit the brick then we have to set the current bricks alive variable to false so we set it that we checked for collision there is a collision between the brick and the ball so we set set the current bricks alive variable to false so that indicate that it is broken and we do not want to check for collision with it and we do not want to render it and talking about checking collision with it, we have to put another if statement up here. Because we only want to check for collision if the brick is alive. So if bricks current one alive is equal to true. Then we'll check for collision and if there is a collision set the brick to alive variable to false. So now we have the checking for collision done. If it, the brick is alive, we check for collision, change the y velocity, and set the alive variable to false if there was a collision. And we only do the rendering of the brick if there has been, if the brick is alive. Now let's add an optimized thing down here. After the brick's alive is false, add a brick statement because if we find a collision, set the brick's alive value to false and change the velocity. We do not have to check for additional collisions. So that speeds up the code a little. Let's compile this and we have the ball bouncing off, breaking the bricks. As you can see it works nice. But there is one problem which should we get in a few hits because now we're only checking for basic collision. And that means that whenever the ball hits the brick from left, right, up or down, it will always change the Y position. We do not know if it hit it from the bottom or the up part, so that is on the Y axis, or if it hit it on the X axis. That means it moved left or right and they hit the brick on its left side or its right side. So that can make a little strange behavior because it will move to the brick from the left to right and going to hit the brick on its left side and it's not going to bounce back to the left but it's going to change the y velocity so we want to change that we want that the ball bounces off 
either on the side or on the upper or but lower edge of the brick and for do doing that we have to change our collision logic and basically the simplest way to check where the collision happened either up down or left right is to simply do collision checking twice first you have to move the ball on the x-axis check for collision and if it happened then negate the y velocity then you move the ball on the y-axis check for collision again and if there was a collision simply negate the y velocity it's not the fastest way to check for different collision angles because you have to check for collision twice for every brick but it's one of the simplest way to do it so we're going to use that in our game so this is the collision check and this is the ball's X movement so let's cut out the Y movement and put it under the collision checking so first we move the ball at the X axis check for collision and if there was a collision we negate the X velocity now now when we have checked for collision we move the ball at the Y axis and check for collision again so we simply have to copy the code so we have now two times collision checking and the only change we have to do is now that we move the ball at the Y axis we have to change the ball's Y velocity because we want it to bounce up and down and that's basically it we simply have copied the collision checking so we have now doubled the time we need to check collisions but we do check the collision if it happened on the Y axis or on the X axis so let's compile and run that and we should come to a point where the ball is going to hit a brick that just happened at the left or the right side and as you can see it bounces away from it it does not only change the Y velocity let me just check if I'm still recording, yes I am and this is basically a simple two-staged collision detection first move on the x-axis, check y-axis, check and that's as simple as it gets now let's do some altering to the code because now we have the collision, it works and the game closes if the ball hits the bottom screen bottom border of the screen let's first change that let's make it that if the ball hits the bottom we put all the bricks back and like restart the game something like that we have to we want to have an effect that the game restarted so as you can see now it closes and to simply make an illusion that the game restarted is that you have to simply set everything back on how it was at the start so basically what we have to do is execute almost all of this code well actually this code the initial position of the pad the button the initial position of the ball and the initial velocity of the ball we do not want to copy that because this is the initialization we do not want to do that twice but we do want to execute this for loop again so we set every bricks back to its starting position and this is the part where we check if the game has to close if the ball hit the bottom edge of the screen and let's lead this so this is running is false closes our game and let's simply copy all of that code above there into this condition now let's do this copy this paste it down here let's just like this and we also need for the bricks so copy this for loop down there so every brick is going to be put back into its 
starting position. Paste that here. Let me just do this. And so this is basically done now. We set the path at the middle again, set the ball at the starting position and the speed, and we go through each brick, set its x y position, which basically already is set, but we also set it back to alive. Actually we can ag delete this part because bricks do not move. So we have our initial position set up there before the loop and now we simply have to put them alive. So we only have to set this variable to true. So we do not need this code. We simply have to go through all of the bricks and set each one back to alive. And that's basically it. Let's compile that and run. I'm going to break some bricks. And now I'm going to leave the ball. Oh, bugger. We have to change some of this. And that is basically because I made a big mistake down here. That is, I redefined the variables. So delete the floats. Oh, that's a big mistake from my part. We do not want to redefine the variables. We have we want to change the variables that already exist. No, they should do it. We simply change them back to where they were at the start. Again, let's break some bricks. And let's leave the ball to and it simply restarted the game. That works nice. And this is all I have to say for this episode. Uh, I do not really know what's going to be in the next episode. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, then comment on the video. I'm probably thinking about loading images, so we're going to load images, or let uh, maybe some additions to the simple gameplay. Uh, I won't do any font rendering, so do not suggest that, because rendering font is not as easy as it sounds in OpenGL, so we're going to skip fonts for now. So any suggestion, write in the comment, um, and this is basically it. See you next time in the next episode, and goodbye.